South Africa was October 5th to the 8th. Comrade Marfa from Detroit was a part of our delegation. Um, I was invited as Community Labor United for Postal Job and Services. I'm in a union, Local 2 UFT, for the home care providers. Um, and Marfa was invited uh, as UAW as an officer of her union. Um, we'd like to thank Carl Gentile of Baltimore, who played a great role in getting us in touch with the World Federation, and um, someone named Marfa and Kay, who um, I don't know them, but they actually was instrumental in following our application uh, for being a part of the delegation. Uh, so I'd like to go over, I'd like to point out first that I pass out two pieces of literature, one on um, the World Federation on your chairs, and the other is on labor against racist terror. And being that we were uh, attending this world conference of 96 million workers, 131 different countries, it was held in Africa. Um, it was, it was co-sponsored by Kasatu, one of the biggest African or black federation in the world. We felt that it was a great time to, um, for us to be there and being Workers' World Party and our question on national oppression and the right to self-determination, uh, we knew that we had a lot to offer uh, going into it. Um, the North American delegation, uh, which uh, someone named Frank Goldsmith, who's the North American chair, who worked with us very um, collaboratively throughout um, the whole conference. He invited us to um, meet a few people like the communication workers, uh, which is the workers that work with the postal unions. But they're not just postal union. They're, they're union, they're postal, they're telephone, they're computers, um, communication. Uh, and we had a chance to exchange with them what the postal workers was doing here. The struggle of door to door, uh, to save jobs from door to door, the struggle that we had against, that we got against Staples, and the past struggle that we had, and the structure, and one of their big things is working around postal union, and they're going to send us some material there of saying what postal banking is and how it actually served to actually have them be their own particular union. North American delegation uh, was 1199. Stella Vasta was there, who actually collaborated us throughout the whole campaign. Uh, TWU Local 100, uh, ALI um, um, uh, uh, Doc Workers, uh, Communication Workers 1181, uh, UAW Marfa Ashmi, and Klucher, and the Rufus uh, Local 36. And the Rufus uh, Local 36 had a great importance because they were one of the first union that was allowed back from North America, uh, I think since 1945. I have it somewhere in the note when it was a split uh, with the World Federation. And their construction union based in LA, I first got to contact them from Bill Doris and got to have some exchange with a guy named Cliff there and his family members. He brought him and his, two, his wife and two kids came with them. But their construction workers are 450 workers um, from LA and um, gave a very good talk and worked with Pop here. So he, we know some of the people that they work with on this side of the coast. So we want to be engaged with them as well um, to, to do follow up. Of course, um, um, Klucher, as I said, uh, being that I put in my first application as a unionist and figured that was the right thing to do, Sarah actually insisted I put down Klucher, Community Labor United for Postal Job and Services. And being that there's social unionism uh, dealing with the question of a united front in which we uh, was actually studying, um, like um, after the period of the Marshall Plan, uh, or the Fourth International dealing with the whole united front of workers, students, uh, other organization, immigrant organization. Uh, I was happy that we got chosen as that and we were able to, like I said, meet the communication workers and now we could actually follow up different uh, work around that line. Uh, we were able, the first day of the conference, uh, open up uh, maybe I should finish this and go back to the first day of the conference. Um, one of the, the social unionism that we were able to employ further was the work around Asta Lopez, and this was spearheaded by Estella Vasta's 1199. She had a cardboard replica of Asta Lopez, and everywhere she went, she carried that. And we got 
uh, to actually be a part of writing a resolution to actually bring that to the conference floor. And we also was able to get it into the Kasatu March, which was happening after the general strike. And they invited Stella and uh, her co-worker, Diane, to come up to the front and be a part of the lead banner. Being that who Oscar Lopez was, being arrested and longer than Mandela, uh, being arrested on sedition and so forth, they understood the connection of what was happening with Oscar Lopez. And we got also uh, the Kasatu president to actually endorse this. And at the rally, um, after the march, the Kasatu president along with George the Wolf for president, the World Federation president, the general secretary, actually um, uh, spoke out about Oscar Lopez. Uh, we raised the question of Mamiya and got a few endorsement there for December the 9th, um, dealing with the longshoremen's as well as the Zimbabwe migrant organization actually endorsed it. The Bass grouping uh, actually um, spoke about Mamiya and spoke about um, uh, Oscar Lopez and their opening remarks. The North American uh, spokesperson was someone that we know from Freedom Road, Sarah Flounders know her and a few other people, uh, Serena, I can't think of her last name right now, but she gave a very good talk about um, what was happening in the work here as an ashmi worker, but what was happening from uh, the U.S. and so forth. She raised the question of United Here Local 26 because someone had got a hold of them and sent them, gave them a button before they came on, that it was a question of what was happening uh, with the strike. Uh, of course, later on, we were able to be in touch with Eddie and got a solidarity statement to Kasatu, uh, um, General Strike, and Kasatu actually um, got on the Twitter right away with the president and actually um, acknowledged uh, what was happening uh, with local here, tw um, local 26, the strike they was having, the question of insurance that everybody understood. The first day of the conference, uh, we got out 300 workers world, uh, maybe both in the second day, but most of them in the first day. We got out uh, over the period of the conference over 100 of Lily um, Moorhead statement. Uh, we carried um, for president, especially when you know uh, we're going to, we're in uh, Durban and you're dealing with the question of the live struggle there and uh, having an African American woman and an African American men being a presidential candidate. It was a good time to get it out, but when Martha was passing the material out, she was saying vote for a communist candidate and people would turn around just like this. And you gotta remember who we were, who we were with. I mean, the, the, you gotta see the article, the article that, that Martha wrote, one of the first meeting that we had, the All Indian Communist, uh, All Indian Federation was a woman that actually spoke that Martha would be writing the article about but we were um, I never been to a, a spot like that where you were around so many workers so many communists uh, people who were chanting down down with capitalism up up with socialism and it's changing work and, and different struggle uh, it, it was like super unique and uh, it was completely red everywhere you went you know you saw like red you saw like this is like red <laughs> you know what I mean? so the first day of the conference uh, which uh, you had uh, Kasatu speaker, uh, which dealt with the question of what was happening with the student struggle there, and and saying that um, raising the question that the Freedom Charter that the student have the right to demand free education, and he said, but we don't own the means of production, and our support and so forth uh, from the private sector is not forthcoming and that we actually employ a lot of uh, trade workers, uh, vocational workers, as well as student workers, and that we pay for 80 percent of the student tuition, and Kasatu actually support the student struggle and so forth. Then you had Jacob Zuma speak, who is the president of South Africa, who is the administrator of South Africa, a capitalist government at this particular time. But what was shopping, Zuma said everything that the General Secretary Blake Yonanzo said in relationship that the 2008 global economic crisis is reaching South Africa in a very unique way. And it's reaching it in a way that uh, it hasn't, the 20 years, they hadn't had any means to further their struggle economically because all the resources are still in the hand of the bankers, the miners, and so forth. And they were raising this struggle that they were having, um, like labor outsourcing called Labor Broker, um, this big giant project that's sucking up 
millions of dollars uh, in RAND and so forth called eToll, where they're trying to make it so modern that they have this giant toll system that's employing nobody but supposed to give you speedy to go to work and nobody can't afford it and it's like draining the economy like actually blind. So uh, those are some of the struggles uh, that they were putting forth. But the question of Zuma, the next day in the bourgeois press, they actually said, Zuma fight U.S. capitalism. Now I find that to be pretty strange right away for them to actually have it like that, but you can kind of see what they're saying. South Africa economy now, um, their economic is 26.6. This, this is what we're dealing with within the country. And for them to try to shift away what's happening with the student struggle, what's happening with the economics there, what's happening with Brexit there, and so forth, which is another unique question that we got to dig farther in, uh, which is not like we want it, but it's something that we got to take a hold of because we had some situation where some workers from Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, Libya, and elsewhere actually had some very bad experience in South Africa coming there, and that is the plain truth. But for the press to actually do that showed a different what was happening with there. Now, um, Blake's statement dealing with the global economic crisis on 2008 and saying that it's another pending economic crisis was more embracing and so forth. And it seems like um, the South African Communist Party is actually uh, at the hem and making a demand and a push to be the ruling class party of tomorrow. And it really looks like it's some shift uh, toward that direction. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm losing it here. Okay, the conference, um, like I said, the articles uh, explain it. Uh, but one of the, one a couple of the meetings that we had, we should know of. I'm not saying it right. I think it's Niger. It's N I G E R. It's a West African country. A Niger, uh, Niger. 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 Um, we had communication with them throughout the conference and they're really saying we want relationship with your party uh, please write us back and we want to be in touch and this isn't happen one day this happened in each session and each session they told us a little bit what's happening there and we explained what was happening in there we gave out a, a complete package uh, we had about 40 packages 35 packages of all our literature from school bus drivers strikers to Black Lives Matter with uh, Labor, Monica Moorhead, everything that we were doing, uh, the postal workers pamphlet, we had it in there with the paper. When I gave it to the North Korean, they say, this paper is a friend of ours. Right away, he told his, his colleague, this paper is a friend of ours. Uh, we had a meeting with the North American uh, session was called with South America, North America, the Brazilians, who were there as the CP as well as the Workers Party and so forth, I found that out a little bit the hard way, but <laughs> they came to the meeting and we had a great exchange and Muffa got invited uh, afterwards as a UA, uh, UAW member to Brazil. She also got invited to Venezuela as well uh, as also the whole North American delegation got invited to Cuba to march and the May Day Parade as uh, World Federation against um, tr uh, trade unionists in North America. So stuff like that been happening. Um, Bikinis Faso, they were very serious with being with us. We got to talk to the, the Chinese delegation a little. We got to talk to the Vietnamese delegation a lot. Uh, we got to talk to um, the migrant workers um, from Sri Lanka uh, a lot. This just continued like over and over again and we got um, to actually do interviews and so forth. We were observers there. So it wasn't to a point where we had to be like very diplomatic and we had to work very close with the North American, which we had a pretty good delegation. It wasn't a, a struggle to actually work them. We had a, a good delegation to actually work with. But I should give you the history of our, our uh, entry into that beyond Carl. We start studying as a labor fraction as workers' world, uh, the World Federation from the point of view of seeing bodies that was dealing with Black Lives Matter um, and could father the spontaneity of that particular struggle as a workers' class organization for some level of intervention as a vanguard around it beyond a party role to it. So we got for weeks and weeks, we have been discussing uh, the World Federation, 
as a, even before we got invited, and we did, we got invited as Workers World. The way it was, uh, the the way that they actually pick you as unions is how they actually do it. But we got invited as a party. People should know that we got invited as a party. And, but we were studying it, and we were studying it from the point of what was a united democratic front and what happened with a popular front and, and how that made a difference and so forth. And we, were, we heard that years ago that we were, it was an attempt to actually join the World Federation. So it wasn't, it wasn't like we were neglecting this giant working class body. And that's now from 1945 and from France of the founding of it and it moved to Greece. Now you, you, when, you, when you look at it and you see that uh, the North Korean was there, the South Korean wasn't allowed to come. They got denied on some sort of legality. So they wasn't, but we've been in touch with them uh, since we've been here through some of the rallies that we've been having. Uh, you had Vietnam there and you had China China there, and you're sitting at it, then you had like um, the biggest delegation in the history of all the federation from West Africa was there. Then you probably had like about 10 other African countries there. You had Cuba and Latin America, and, and you had like later delegation that joined it. Russia actually joined for the first time. You had the Angolas, uh, Angolans that actually joined. So it, it was this unique thing that you actually saw that was actually growing and 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 getting bigger and bigger and taking on like very serious struggle. Rather, it was a train wreck that happened in Cameroon. Yesterday, they came out with a solidarity statement in relationship of Cuba, you know, saying you know like block, drop the blockade and this vote that we just saw. There's people that the people that pushed the vote for the U.S. to actually say we are staying and to tell their barbaric. Uh, Part account uh, Israel uh, staying, you know what I'm saying. So they're, they're speaking to issues generally, and we're planning to be in touch with them. One of our regret is that we didn't have 8751 there with us, because 8751 is who we were introducing and who had agreed to actually applied for membership in the Federation. And they couldn't be there because of the ongoing struggle that they had assumed and now running everything inside of the fight against Veolia. And the development that was happening in Haiti, the Haitian election, and they asked for the Haitian. And we told them, well, you know, this election is happening in a few days in Haiti and so forth. Then we didn't know about the earthquake and so forth. But that's why um, 8751 couldn't be there. But we're following it up with them. And now we got the example of what happened with the roofers. We want to see uh, what was their way of actually applying and so forth so we could learn and we could give that to 8751 and we could start to follow up. Now, what are we doing with this at this particular point? Uh, I'm speaking here. Um, Wednesday, Comrade Diane had us on the labor forum on her radio show. Me and Martha came in, and we actually, uh, it was a great radio show for that. We're in touch with Amiyomi to be on a show. Um, Amiyomi is very important uh, with um, where the conference happened. And being that the conference have now a South African president, uh, that's the first time that that actually happening and so forth. And uh, it's another show in Massachusetts that, uh, I mean, in, um, uh, Milwaukee that she's looking into. But what we did right away is that all the members, all the uh, cards that we got from the North American delegation as well as the conference as a whole, we're sending them an invitation to the Workers' World Party Conference. We don't see any need not to. And a lot of them probably can't come, the immigrant groups and so forth. They probably can't make their way here, but we probably can get solidarity messages. And then we could begin to have our own uh, connection. Because what happened there, beyond labor groups, we were able to connect with parties, communist parties, ourselves. So we could go, even though we were observers, we were able to actually take the paper and make those connections. And we want to follow up that particular work, as well as this immigrant group, that we, the migrant group that we met, we definitely want to follow up, work with them, how we go from there. Okay, following, that's the conference. Um, I'm doing a video, didn't get it together, but you have to see it. <laughs> it's the most incredible thing in the world. It was 20% women that spoke at the conference. And I checked with Comrade Marfa, and she actually said that was pretty good in relationship to how many people, 1,500 people at the conference, and where the conference was at, actually at. Uh, but it was one woman from the All Indian um, Federation that Marfa did an interview with. She spoke, was the first woman that spoke after the executive committee spoke that was all men. 
She gave this incredible talk of the million point, 200 million march, that, um, general strike that took place in India, uh, everything. And after she spoke, the Kasatu, they had, uh, they probably had about 60 people up in the bleachers that was leading chants. They broke out in a chant, she's a woman, and she's a woman, and it's some sort of sound that they got, yeah, she's a woman, and the place just erupted. See, they know how to father the struggle, even in where they at, they know how to father it. That's why the revolution there is promising. And everybody joined in and they, they were dancing and chanting and doing the toy toy and so forth. We, were, we had a banner up the whole time, say, Smash Capitalism, because everybody put their banner up in the convention hall. This is a co workers hall. It's not like you had to run around and ask and don't put nothing here. We paid for this. This is our hall. And it seemed like everybody act like it. Everybody act like this is our hall. And where the hall was at, it was in Albo, uh, 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 Alberto, um, he was uh, one of the uh, chair of the ANC uh, hall, which was a prison. And one of the person that we met who was honorary at it, who was a founding member of Watu and a founding member of Kasatu in South Africa, and a parliament member, uh, his name is Eric Stalin. Eric Stalin was honored for raising the flag and, and so forth. Eric Stalin was a member, he was in this prison. We were talking and walking and he said, I said, this is a beautiful place, this is a worker's place. He said, yeah. And then he walked a little bit farther and he said, uh, yeah. He said, this used to be a prison. So he told me a little bit, then he walked a little bit farther. And he said, yeah, I was in it. <laughs> you know, and I got a mural of it, and this is someone like 84, and you can't, um, they asked me to, to, to be with him for a few minutes doing some level of security for a while with one of the Kasatu members, and you couldn't walk across the hall because everybody, no matter what age they was, would come up to him and greet him. This how, is this how uh, excited it was with being with him. But let's get to the rally, because the Kasatu rally that was actually called raising the question of the general strike. And the, the general strike was actually called, when the general strike first was called by Kasatu out of the hall, I was excited because it was a, a strike that was called, named by Kasatu with the unemployed employed workers. That's how it first was called. Now it seemed like it got shaped. Um, it, it's a lot of dynamics there. The ANC, the Kostatu, and the Communist Party, and the, the big struggle and attack on the trilateral lines, uh, along with the student struggle going on. Uh, it's a lot of dynamics. So it seemed like it sort of got shift, and it sort of combined with the International Day of Decent Work, which was actually, I understood, was found by uh, the Confederation. But anyway, for us to be there, with all these workers from all over the world repping in a hundred and something countries and to be going to a general strike was absolutely fabulous. And the street, you could feel it in the street as we go out from the conference and, talk, and mangle with the workers. And when the workers hang on the sign, they had signs like in the march, like um, a high electricity of, uh, hurts the poor, about decent job. I mean, these were signs that were bread and butter. It wasn't signed that you sit around a table and you actually you had your program out. These were signs of bread and butter. And on that march, it wasn't just the Kasatu and the Union. People joined it. People actually joined it. So we actually had, uh, of course, we had a party banner. It was two of us, so it was, a, it, was, it was a difficult task. But we carried the banner half of the way, and we videoed uh, half of the way. And we got, a, uh, of course, a lot of people took pictures. And we got the march with the all Indian Congress on it because of what was happening with it. But at the um, end of the march, um, as we got there, um, we went into the stadium and it was a very short end rally and it was an unveiling of a statue, uh, a monument that was dealing with the whole question of the founding of Kasatu and the founding of Wafu at this particular stadium. Again, Asta Lopez was raised and again, um, like I said, at the end of the rally, uh, the general secretary and um, the, uh, President Kasatu jointly raised what was happening with Unite Here 26. And they actually read a little piece of the resolution. So uh, I think our task was, ha um, was at hand. Uh, we have to thank the Labor Committee. We have to thank the party, uh, a lot of friends. 
my family like went like super out in this. All our family always do when we go places and we're not here and so forth. And they always on the spot wondering so forth and so forth. And I love y'all and that was a beyond duty. And I think we should father in this because um, uh, if anyone has the, the know-how of dealing uh, with what um, Milt always say, a united front, it's us. Thank you, comrade. The, the question of um, how many was there, I, I was trying to research the paper, see the paper come in handy. But it was 15, I know it was 1,500 delegates at the conference. Um, they were sort of impressed uh, that the delegates there um, was larger to the extent that it was people coming from all over. Um, the Greece, they were comparing it toward the Greece summit, which was more, but the country where people were coming from, a lot of the West African country, other country, immigrants, they were poorer than what would happen the five years before in Greece. But it was 1,500 um, participants there, and I will check with Martha and try to get the number of unions, because we had it, I saw it in one of the papers, how many unions actually were there. Um, the question of, um, yes, uh, someone spoke from Lebanon and Syria. Uh, Marfa took a lot of notes, and we got we took a lot of st uh, stills. So, but they they were very well received um, those talks that they gave. Um, the question of the metal workers, I need to research that. Um, we know it's complication in the part of the split with the alliance with the metal workers, and that the bourgeoisie there is not letting up one inch of trying to break the alliance. Um, uh, also, what, what happened with the mine workers and some level of police brutality and even people that got killed. Uh, very tragic situation. Uh, Blade, um, the General Secretary of the South African Communist Party, spoke to it directly from the conference. And I'll make a note to review that so I can give you a greater response on what he actually said about it. As well as he spoke directly to what was happening with the student strike. Um, Blade is the Minister of Education um, beyond being the Communist Party chair secretary, he's a minister of education for a minister of education. So he follows all. So he's in first contact with the students on the ground and so forth. But we we were following that. Uh, what you had to follow was on the press every day. And what uh, one of the things that was very sharp and very noticeable is that the struggle against um, Afrikaner kind of language being taught. And uh, Pretoria, I think with and then one of the colleges and some of the high schools, that wasn't carried at all. Uh, they were like 1976, like Soweto, where the students were being denied their language and their braids. If they had braids, they couldn't wear braids in there. And the students had incredible demonstration about this racism here, but there wasn't touching that. But it was a demand on the question of education. And we had some general discussion outside of the meeting, uh, especially with um, someone named General, who's one of the founding members of Kasatu and Kasatu, and a few of the youth, and someone from the ANC Youth International League, who actually um, came up to me and asked for the book um, um, capitalism at a dead end, and I only had, I took like five of each, I only had one left. I gave it to the comrade in Niger because we was going back and forth, and he ran after me, since, so I got to send him that book, but it, it shows you that, that people are following us, and that our tools are, are there, and they, they want to engage it, but we got to ch have the ch a chance to have a discussion with them, and they actually was telling us that South Africa liberation struggle didn't get any support after the failed Soviet Union. We got to remember, and they remind us, and General said this over and over again, uh, General is like um, 79, he's an old god, but he said it over and over again. He said that after the victory was won, it wasn't any support group. He said they didn't have any camp because the Soviet Union wasn't there or the Eastern Union Premium Bloc was gone. And he said no one, nationally and internationally, it wasn't any support coming in. And he said 80% of the resources was still in the hand of the ruling class, the Bills, And so he laid it out very plain. And he said, well, how could we pay for education? He said, that's the Freedom Charter, but we don't have it. 
We don't have it. Uh, so th that was sort of telling and um, it also get to the point where uh, what happened at the World Conference Against Racism, which we had a big delegation, myself, uh, Sharon, Bill Dorries, uh, who else it was, um, Andre, uh, Sue Harris, was Sue, no, you was at the other meeting. Previous. Yeah, the previous meeting. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Bill, oh boy, he was incredible there, he was so helpful. And we actually made so much gain there, it was a whole question against Israel and uh, turning around the whole question of the bourgeois conference and, and it was a real struggle. Uh, of course, things are horrible from what I could see. I went for a couple of walks. And I'm in Durban now, I'm not in Soweto, in which we got a chance on some of the other delegation that Sue went and other people went. And we got a chance in Key Martin, we went to six different places, Pretoria, Soweto, East London, so what, you know, the whole areas, and we got to see it. But from what we see in being that this is a very industrial place, and uh, also it's a place of still a stronghold, uh, it's the, the development of the Zulu party, um, Zuma is a Zulu. The airport is uh, Durban International King Zaka Zulu uh, um, Airport. If you go to Joe Bird, it's the Oliver Tumble. Well, <laughs> it kind of, and things is kind of in that way where it actually ran somewhat different. But the economic situation is still the same. People had signs in the march, we have we want a constitutional right to strike. You know, the healthcare situation is horrendous. Um, the postal workers saying that they don't get the, um, the contract that they get from the government, a communication worker, I'm sorry, is like, what, 45% and which they said that is like non-existent. And uh, HEL is one of the big contractors there that got so much of the mail and the carrying and so forth. So it, it, it's a real capitalist government and due to 2008 in which all the speakers spoke of, it's getting worse, it's unbearable. So what we see in the student struggle is a real demand and they're scared of it because the demand is not only the student, they just see the students in the street right now. And we gotta remember that you have like, a, um, you have people that was, uh, was founded in the trilateral alliance that was in the unions, um, uh, SACTU before uh, Kasatu. Um, they, were, they, they, were, they were born underground you, you have people there were telling a story that was MK members. So you had people that was a part of the armed revolutionary struggle. So it's not impossible the father struggle as things materially deteriorize. People know it. People got people. You see it in their dance. They're, they're, it's all over and, and it's still there. But the economic situation, from what you saw. Uh, yes, you can kind of look at it and, and I mean if you go on the street the benders has always been a big thing Because they're like workers that we see here as oh, yeah, Blake uh, actually spoke at quite a length about precarious workers and the workforce And this is what Larry is writing and talking about and this is what we're studying in the Union The health care thing everything that we're talking about over there. They're taking it up like right in the streets It's like you don't even have to like let's engage with yeah, boom, boom, this is it. Yeah, we don't have it and This is what we need and so forth. So it, 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 it's so much in tune and like they said, they kept going back to the 2008 crisis and they kept saying, yeah, we're looking for this next crisis soon and now and so forth. So they are excited, you know, and uh, they're optimistic uh, about uh, that the struggle is going to come and they're going to be able to take it on. Um, Palestine. I mean, we all know it, but every time you see it, like you know it when we went there, you got to see it again. The whole fight against Israel has been the historical fight of the ANC, the party, and an alliance. And they had a table so big, and uh, one of the persons running the table, uh, Lumbium, if I'm saying her name right, she's the international secretary for Kasatu, who we really need to be in touch with on several fronts. But she di did the work on the whole question of Palestine. We had a good change with the CG. And of course, the place abrupted when they were announced and when they spoke because it's an ongoing struggle now in France uh, with the labor law. And um, it, it's the whole struggle of that France is still up under martial law. And people talked about it that a lot of this struggle is going on with the workers. They, they're doing it as the workers and they're fighting the police and all that, but they're also fighting. A state of emergency. They're fighting the army in the street, basically, for their workers' right. So their their chance was like, you know, it was all it was incredible. The Monica Mohead buttons went off the hook. Of course, we had to like give it to every other person because they were like, 
<laughs> go to button. Yeah, go to button. Um, let's see. Welcome Workers Union. Okay, and I think that's about it. Oh, one thing. I mean, when you when one thing that was gratifying uh, over here, we hear a lot that the unions, or we hear the workers over there. We see everything, and all the federations said workers and union in their title. And to me, that means something because that deals with the situation. Oh, I'm just in a union. Well, you, I'm glad you're in a union, but I'm not in a union to that. I mean, a mother would say, "Well, I don't have the the opportunities you have from being in a union." But when you say workers and unions in your title, I think it put the movement up forward. And when you when you when we're at a place where you're saying you are among 96 million workers. And when they always say over here that, well, the working class is 11%, they say that a lot in the bourgeois press because they want to demoralize you, you know, with the right to work and everything else. But when you are among that particular number, it, it really energizes you and, and so forth. And when I was speaking about the break of the World Federation in 1995, from um, 45, if I'm right, uh, we're talking about what broke off was the International Federation of Free Trade, uh, which was. Um, CIA, um, uh, AFL-CIO, and to have some level of AFL-CIO workers there and being a part of our delegation is beginning to deal with that. But we should know that uh, that was at existence and you still have that to some degree because the state not going to give up and let the workers and not be the guard of the corporation and so forth. So uh, I just wanted to know that that was w what was happening with that particular entity. Um, did I ask, did not answer somebody's question? It was a question of blah, 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 it was that, Sue, Bill, uh, your question. I'm going to research your question more, Greg, but, um, but we're going to need help because people are looking for us to be in touch with them. And we're looking for opportunities uh, to speak at other meetings, um, rather and other events coming up. Um, beyond what's happening uh, with the Cuban uh, May Day, um, I even thought about if once we do the Caribbean Day again, there's no reason that we shouldn't go out there but we're engaged with 96 million workers and so forth and you are part of that and so forth and raise the question of the United uh, Front and so forth. We have the opportunity to do that. The Labor Day March is here. We have the opportunity to do that. But it might be other things that you might hear about and we'd be glad to try to engage it.